हरे कृष्ण जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरीवर यशोदानंदन ब्रज जनरंजन यमुनतीरवन चार यमुना यमुनतीरवन चार जयो राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरीवर धारी यशोदानंदन ब्रज जनरंजन यमुनतीरवन चार यमुना जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय विष्णुपाद परमहंस प्रयोजकाचार्य अष्टोत्तर शत श्री श्रीमद अभय चरणारविंद भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्ल प्रभुपाद की जय जय विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिव्रजकाचार्य अष्टोत्तर शत श्री श्रीमद भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गोस्वामी महाराज शिल प्रभुपाद की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णवृंद की जय ग्रंथ राष्ट्रीय भागवत महापुराण की जो <coughs> ताय गौर प्रेमानंद समवेद भक्त वृंद की जाय श्री गुरु गौरांग की जो ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय <coughs> ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नष्ट नष्टप्रायेशद्रेशु नित्यं भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टिकी ओम ज्ञानति निरंधस्य ज्ञानाजन शलाकया चक्षुरन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नमो विष्णुपदाय कृष्णपृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत <coughs> स्वामी नामिने 
Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna <coughs> Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna. Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 7, Text 28 and 29. Yad vai vraja vraja pashun vishato yapitan Palastva jiva yad anugraha drishti vrishtya Tachuddhayeti vishavira vilola jiham Uchata isyad vragam viharan hradinam Yad vai vraja vraja pashun vishato yapita Palastva jivayad anugraha drishti vrishtya Tachuddhayeti vishavira vilola jiham Uchata isyadvaragam viharan hradinam Yadvai vraja vraja pashun vishato yapitan Palastva jiva yad anugraha drishti vrishtya Tat chuddhayeti vishavir yavilola jifan Uchata isyadvaragam viharan radinam Mataji's Yet one who why certainly Vraja at Vrindavan Vraja Pashun the animals thereof Vishatoya poisoned water Pitan those who drank Palan the coward men to also Ajivayat brought to life Anugraha Drishti merciful glance Vrishtya by the showers of Tat that 
शुद्ध है फॉर प्योरिफिकेशन अति एक्सीडिंगली विषवीर हाईली पोटेंट पॉइजन बिलोल लर्किंग जिह्वम वन हु हैज सच अ टंग उच्छाट ईश्या सीवियरली पनिश्ड उरगम ऑन टू द स्नेक विहरन टेकिंग इट एज अ प्लेजर हृदय न्याम इन द रिवर ट्रांसलेशन देन ऑल्सो वेन द कवर्ड बॉयज एंड देअर एनिमल्स ड्रैंक द पॉइजन वॉटर ऑफ द रिवर यमुना एंड आफ्टर द लॉर्ड इन चाइल्डहुड रिवाइव्ड दैम बाय हीज मर्सिफुल ग्लैंड जस्ट टू प्यूरीफाई द वॉटर ऑफ द यमुना रिवर ही जम्प्ड इन टू इट एज इफ playing uh, playing and chastised <coughs> the venomous kalia snake which was lurking there it stung emitting waves of poison who can perform such herculean tasks but the supreme lord so it doesn't have a report we'll go to the next word translation and purport by his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami shri prabhupad <coughs> translation on the very night of the day of the chastisement of the kaliya snake when the inhabitants of rajabhumi were sleeping carefreely there was a forest fire ablaze due to dry leaves and it appeared that all the inhabitants were sure to meet their death but the lord among along with balaram saved them simply by closing his eyes such are the human superhuman activities of the lord purport although in this verse the lord's activity has been described as superhuman it should be noted that the lord's activities are always superhuman and that distinguishes him from the ordinary living being uprout uprooting a gigantic banyan or arjuna tree and extinguishing a blazing forest fire simply by closing one eyes are certainly impossible by any kind of human endeavor but not only are these activities amazing to hear but in fact all other activities of the lord whatever he may do are all superhuman as confirmed in bhagavad gita 4.9 whoever knows the superhuman activities of the lord due to their very transcendental nature becomes eligible to enter the kingdom of krishna and as such after quitting this present material body the knower of the transcendental activities of the lord goes back home back to god at hari ekesh so we would like to welcome all the devotees this morning shrimad bhagavatam class thank you for coming so <coughs> the krishna katha is glorified everywhere it is said that uh, <clears throat> by one of our great acharyas shri rupa goswami he said that aho aho bhir nakaler vidhuyate sudha sudharam madhuram pade pade dine dine chandra na chandra shitala yasho yashoda tane yaschigiyate that means <clears throat> there are innumerable problems everywhere aho aho bhir nakaler vidhuyate but what is the solution sudha sudharam madhuram pade pade he is saying that we should drink the nectar of the krishna katha and what is the nature of this krishna katha it is said that idhuyate sudha sudharam madhuram pade pade dine dine chandrana chandra shitala yasho yashoda tanyashchigiyate so it is just like uh, after coming from a hot sun 
sitting under, let us say, AC and somebody applies chandan on the forehead and gives a drink of, let us say, lassi. How, it, how one feels? One is relieved of all the problems. Similarly, Krishna Katha is like that of elixir. When one drinks it, all the malaises of this age of Kali Yuga are vanquished. So, <clears throat> so thus in this verse, so many glories of Krishna have been described. And uh, in the previous chapter, Sutta Goswami has described about Purushavataras and predominantly concerning their Maya Shaktis. And his present chapter, he is describing about the Leelavataras, which are composed of his Chit Sakti. So, therefore, we saw so many incarnations of the Lord being described all these days. So, coming to the today's text, which is 28th, wherein the pastime of Kaliya being chastised, that has been described over there. So, if you look deep into this pastime, <clears throat> we'll understand that who are the Vrajvasis? They are very, very intimate friends and devotees of the Lord. And uh, what is Vrindavan? It is Krishna's own homeland. In fact, Krishna brought Vrindavan, Govardhan and Yamuna and all the inhabitants of Vrindavan right from Golok Vrindavan. So, it just transferred from there to this material realm and that is Golok, that is Braja, that is Gokula. And he himself is the same Supreme Personality of Godhead, uh, acting like a ordinary human being. So, this is the scenario. <coughs> And at the same time, what is Krishna's quality is, is a connoisseur of love. That means, he is a knower of the, the science of devotional love and he understands every intricate details of this transcendental love. And more than that, he takes relish to increase this, this divine love in the hearts of his devotees. That means he is not satisfied with whatever little or lot of love we may have for him, but he wants us to increase it. And he personally comes down and he helps us to increase that love for him. So, thus uh, here in this uh, beautiful episode, we see how uh, residents of Vrindavan, they are already drowning in love of God. It is not that they have, they are like new of our devotees like us. They are in actually drowning in love of God. But yet Krishna wants to increase their love towards Him. And therefore we see how He is going to do that in this pastime. So He performed this most enchanting pastime of chastising Kaliya and thereby being a connoisseur of love, he increased their love for him forever and he takes pleasure in doing so. And uh, we see that how Krishna does it by putting his devotees in inconceivable distresses, situations. So, in Vrindavan, everything is going on very nicely, as usual. And uh, what Krishna does? He sends <coughs> Kaliya there. And uh, he enters Yamuna river and there is a great havoc created. The resulting into the depth of his own coward friends, the cows and uh, the fishes over there, and the, uh, even the birds, everything was, you know, becoming poisonous there. So, most of the inhabitants of Vrindavan, his own loving devotees, 
they were dead <clears throat> this entire brindavan was traumatized and uh, if this can happen to the brajavasis if krishna can do this to his own loving devotees then uh, he can do it to anybody and everybody nobody is spared if brajavasis are not uh, they are not spared then who will be spared if somebody wants to go near him and love him so then we have to pay the price the price of now undergoing all these terrible tests and uh, when if somebody is faithfully executing one's devotional service krishna at the end makes it very relishable so here we see the dreadful terrific condition of his dear devotees resulting into a once again a wonderful reunion and thus he increases his love towards their love towards him and uh, most importantly he did it on a daily basis it's not that once in a blue moon it happened it used to happen every single day that means krishna made sure that some demon will come to vrindavan and create havoc and all the inhabitants of vrindavan they are into great distress traumatized and ultimately where will they go they will go to krishna only because he is the cause of all causes and very helplessly they would take shelter of krishna and krishna being very merciful toward his devotees he would come very peacefully nonchalantly he would just take care of the situation as if nothing had happened and immediately there was a wonderful you know festival mood because krishna uh, would save their his devotees in a wonderful beautiful way so before that they would they would be on the verge of death literally and uh, at that point of time krishna knowing the perfect timing the appropriate time he would appear on the scene and uh, he would make the entire atmosphere into a great celebra- celebration and then there would be great union so in today's verse uh we see that uh, after kaliya was chastised ultimately he was forgiven also <clears throat> and uh, if you see his uh, activities in brindavan he is a demon who coming into braja and poisoned the entire lake and thus killed the fishes and so many creatures in brindavan and yet krishna is willing to forgive him because before this happened there were so many demons that even after kaliya so many demons came they were not spared only putana and kaliya were spared it is very essential to know why krishna only spared these two demons we hear from acharyas and shri prabhupada that given elaborate purports that uh, <coughs> putana was spared because she dressed as a mother and she wanted to breastfeed him although she had a great uh, uh, devilish mentality of killing krishna but she dressed up herself just like a mother and she came towards krishna and krishna only noticed that that she comes to me just to serve me he didn't see that he already knew that she is going to come going to she is coming only to poison him but yet krishna did not take note of that and then she came and she tried her level best but krishna purified her thoroughly and then he gave her the highest destination she became the nurse of krishna in brindavan hmm? on the level of mother yashoda and she was assistant of mother yashoda she could become later on 
Because she just, only one good thing what she did was she dressed up just like a uh, devotee or a mother. And here in this case of Kaliya, he is again spared. Although amongst all the demons, they came and directly attacked Krishna, they did nothing to no one other than Krishna. They were uh, actually trying to kill Krishna and Krishna very nicely dealt with them. He killed them and sent them, sent them to the higher destination that is uh, impersonal Brahman because he uh, is known as Hatari Gatidayaka. So he can award liberation to even his enemies. That is the greatness of Krishna. And he did it. However, it was attacking, they were attacking Krishna directly and Krishna killed them. But Krishna said, Mad Bhaktya Puja Abhidika. So I love my devotees more than myself. Worship my worship of my devotees is better than my worship. That means Krishna loves his devotees more than himself. And when we see that, I mean, numerous devotees are being killed by this Kaliya. Uh, but uh, if you look at the situation, there should not be any forgiveness for Kaliya, and yet he was forgiven. Of course, we know that because uh, the wives of Kaliya came forward and they were they were pleading to Krishna, so please spare him, please forgive him. <coughs> So thus uh, he was spared. In this regard, there is a beautiful story uh, of once uh, when one, two friends, they were traveling by the sea. And uh, once when they reached to a particular destination, their uh, boat got actually, uh, it was wor no, not working anymore. So ultimately, there's anyway, at least we are in this island. So they went into the island and then it was already late night. So they decided that they would stay in different places. And then uh, <clears throat> they were trying to pray to the Lord to save them. Because they are in this unknown island without any boat. So how will they come out? Hmm? So that they were in a very dangerous condition. The, they decided to pray to the Lord to show some way. And then both of them, they were staying in different places and praying to God. So, friend day started praying to God. My dear Lord, please save me. I am so hungry now. So, can you please give me something to eat? Then immediately there were nice fruits available in front of him, all of a sudden because Krishna reciprocated. And he was very happy, he sumptuously, he ate those fruits. And then, uh, then he said that, okay, I want to now at least rest, because all day long I am, I've been traveling, so I'm very, very tired. So all of a sudden, in front of him, he saw a nice, nice, uh, let us say, a home. Uh, he actually went in and he stayed there. And he slept nicely. Then morning came, then he said, now, okay, today I have to at least now go to my home, because now I cannot stay in this unknown island. So can you please help me with a new boat, so that I can go, my, go back to my home. And for his surprise, he found a nice boat in front of him, on the shore. He said that, oh, how, how great my God is, that he is, fulfilling all my desires, very happy. <clears throat> he start came, started walking towards the boat and he was about to board the boat. And he heard Akashwani, the great uh, voice of Lord came from the sky. Uh, oh, my dear devotee, uh, so go, very good that you are going home. So what about your friend? Why don't you take him also? <clears throat> Have you forgotten him? Then this friend A replies, uh, I think he must have also prayed to you. That was our I mean, decision before we departed, that he must have prayed to you. And it appears that you didn't reciprocate with him. 
Maybe he didn't have the pure heart. I think that is the reason why you didn't reciprocate with him. So, anyway, so I would like to now go. But uh, the Lord said, I have one more question to you. But he prayed. Do you know what he prayed? A friend they said, how can I know? If he is praying to you, you know, but you tell what did he pray for. He said that my another friend who is staying in another place, so please fulfill every desire of his. This is my only desire. He is in the same situation, very dangerous situation, very precarious condition, yet he is praying, his only prayer is to answer the prayers of his friend. That was his prayer. And because he prayed for you, therefore I actually fulfilled all your desires, the Lord said. When he heard this, he was flabbergasted. He said, my God, so far I never understood my friend whom I lived with all my life. He is so selfless, he is so uh, a real friend to me that he prayed for me. Therefore, I actually so thus, they once again came together and they went back to their home. The point is that prayers. Hmm? So, <clears throat> how wonderful, how powerful are these prayers uttered by the devotees. Uh, similarly, here we see that uh, these wives of Kaliya, they are praying for Kaliya to forgive him. And it is certainly Krishna will fulfill their desires because they were anyway devotees of Krishna. So, Krishna, he actually fulfilled their desire and he forgave them. But if you look at the life history, previous life history of this Kaliya, who is Kaliya? So, <clears throat> our uh, dear Acharya Shla Bhaktivinoda Thakur has compiled a nice book about uh, the demons in Vrindavan. So, there were at least 19 demons who come in the life of Krishna. At least, it is mentioned, these many demons are mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam that uh, and what is their uh, previous background, who were they in their past lives, everything has been described by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So, here uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur speaks about Kaliya. Kaliya actually represents brutality, treachery, pride and envy. And his main job is to come into the association of devotees and poison the Vaishnava's heart. That is the job of Kaliya-like people, Kaliya himself. And, but how will Krishna tolerate this? He will never tolerate that his devotees are poisoned. So ultimately he comes and he actually kills Kaliya. In, in this case he actually punishes Kaliya and he forgives Kaliya. So this is his uh, uh, mentality. And uh, in Garga Samhita it is mentioned that uh, uh, once a uh, uh, sage named Vedashira, he actually <coughs> cursed Another sage, whose name is Ashwashira. Because Ashwashira was simply meditating on the Lord, and all of a sudden is this Vedashira comes and he started yelling at him, chastising him, shouting at him. And uh, maybe it is Ashwashira who found that this is a great injustice, so he actually cursed him, saying that you are hissing like a snake, so better you become a snake. So, Vedashira was ultimately cursed by Ashwashira. Uh, for why? You were chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> he was meditating on the Lord. And here Vedashira comes and tries to punish, I mean, uh, chastise him. So, at that point, actually Lord Vishnu appeared there. And he actually told both of them, Vedashira, don't worry. So, in my next incarnation, whenever I come as Krishna, so I will place my lotus feet on your head and thus you will be saved, you will be uh, awarded with uh, love of devotion. 
and uh, following uh, this curve so vedashira actually becomes kadru i mean uh, the uh, kadru's uh, son as kaliya he come kadru is a daughter of daksha daksha prajapati and from the womb of kadru he takes birth and uh, he is known as uh, this kaliya so <clears throat> these uh, kaliyas wives uh, there are beautiful strings of verses explained in shrimad bhagavatam how they pray for their husband the first prayer goes like this nayo hi dandakrita kilbishe asmin tavavataraya khala nigrahaya this word is very interesting tava avataraya khala nigrahaya so once when i was traversing i happened to see a board the big billboard very nice that in a mumbai police advertisement you must have observed it they say that sadrakshanaya khala nigrahaya that is their logo that is their uh, mission statement sadrakshanaya khala nigrahaya actually they have taken it from <laughs> directly from shrimad bhagavatam uh, also paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya cha duskrutam very nicely they have picked up a very important uh, verses from shrimad bhagavad gita and bhagavatam so sadrakshanaya khala nigrahaya or else uh, tava avataraya this is what the go, uh, i mean uh, wives of kali are uttering and khala nigraha tava avatara you you have taken this incarnation just to chastise the duskrutis or khalas or or rogues like kaliya and similarly we see that lic also they have taken uh, yoga kshema vahamyam isn't it so good they are actually uh, taking something from the vedic scriptures and trying to serve the humanity so <clears throat> so nayo hi danda krita kil vishe asmin tava avataraya khala nigrahaya so they are praying uh, oh my dear lord your punishment is just perfect because after all you have incarnated to punish the evil and then they say that you are so impartial that when it comes to punish you don't discriminate between the your own family members and your own enemies you give, give punishment equally and uh, your punishment we know that your punishment actually help anybody who receives it because it is coming from you who is all merciful and there are so many verses they speak like this and at last they pray aparada sakrut vrtya sarv sadhavya sodhavya svaprajakrta kshantam arati shanta atman moodasya tvam ajanatah they are saying that at least once you should spare them the first instance only you are going to kill them how is it right my dear lord so yes anyway i offended that's understood no problem but at least give me one chance and uh, then they said that uh, bhartra the master should be tolerant at least first time and kshantu marasi shanta atman you are actually peaceful person so you should actually forgive him moodasyatvam ajanata he is anyway a fool number 1 he is a demon so what else can you can you expect from a person like him so now you can you please uh, forgive him they are saying like this and later on finally they say that we are all you know wives of this kaliya we are women so women and children and old people are supposed to be forgiven so can you please forgive us and uh, please spare our husband who is our life and soul and at last they say that uh, uh certainly now you do whatever you want my dear lord after saying all of this again ultimately they are submitting and they are not uh, pressurizing the lord they are ultimately saying my dear lord whatever you want to do you please do i don't have anything to say
and then they say this certainly anyone who execute your order becomes free from all kind of fear that means they have a great conviction about whatever krishna does is for everyone's good and as soon as krishna hear these uh, beautiful prayers he actually comes down from kaliya and actually he forgives him and he spares him so <clears throat> so there are uh, actually many uh, series of lectures given by his holiness radhanath swami maharaj long back in 90s so maharaj has given very beautiful lectures on this episode of kaliya's past times uh, where in one of the lecture the title goes like this the prayers of vaishnavas never go in vain that is the title i i heard that lecture in that uh, maharaj very de- beautifully describes that if krishna prays for some i mean devotees of krishna prays for others then krishna has to take those prayers very seriously he just cannot neglect them because they are uttered by his devotees something will be done by krishna so therefore uh, <clears throat> uh the prayers of devotees are very very powerful we always hear this question why bad things happen to good people you know we always hear about this and discuss about this but sometime we should also ask another question why good things happen to bad people isn't it and here is the bad of all the persons and so much good is happening to him because that white devotees are praying for him so therefore sometimes good things are also happen to bad people so therefore it is the goodness of the good people that they they pray for the betterment of the people so that something good can come in their lives so i i remember many times shamanand pro speaking this in our brahmachari class that uh, he would, he he has said that uh, if you are able to do something in krishna consciousness something good or if you are able to give some good lectures no for sure that in the audience somebody is praying for you <laughs> only then you can actually do something in the service of krishna because uh, when devotees pray then krishna actually reciprocates so i am also very sure that some of you in the audience are praying for me so that i can utter some meaningful words here in the glorification of the lord so <clears throat> thus uh, we see that after is uh, forgiven that the great reunion because all the brajavasis they come and they they actually see krishna and they they were on the verge of death mother ishoda nanda except for balram everybody is in great anxiety because balram knew that he is my anger brother he is supreme lord so nothing will happen to him so therefore except for balram everybody was in great agony and then at last krishna came and everything was nice and there was a great union so so therefore we can uh, <coughs> understand that after this uh, this peaceful atmosphere did not last long very soon something happened so that's what is the 29th verse so uh, we can draw lessons from this if something if everything going well in our life for some time let us say so rest assured that soon a great test is going to come because nothing stays for long especially in krishna consciousness so we may be leading a wonderful peaceful nice life that's very nice we pray for it to krishna's blessings but uh, we can always expect something a greater test which will come and it will come only to help us to progress in our krishna consciousness so we should take it in a very positive mood so here krishna wants us to alert to be alert and to be prepared you know one thing krishna doesn't like you know what is that laziness 
In fact, why Krishna? Nobody likes lazy people, isn't it? Uh, how will Krishna like lazy people? So Krishna doesn't want his devotees to be lazy in the sense that he wants us to be very much prepared and alert about what is happening around us and render devotional service in the background of that. So therefore, in uh, Mukundamala Stotra, Kulashekar actually has prayed. Alasya vapaniya bhakti usalabham dhyayasva narayanam Lokasya vyasana apodana kara dasasya kimna kshama He is asking a question. Ki you give up uh, this sloth or uh, laziness and uh, dhyayasva narayanam <clears throat> meditate on the Lord, serve the Lord. By doing so, bhakti is sulabham. Bhakti is very easily attained. And don't you know that Krishna has done great favors on his devotees? And if you are serving Krishna, so then you should not have any doubt that he will not save you. Hmm? He has done already so much for his devotees. So if you are trying to serve Krishna, then we should be assured that Krishna will save us also. So therefore, uh, uh, giving up this kind of useless laziness, we should actually try to serve Krishna and uh, <coughs> render devotional service to Krishna. So he is solving the problems of everyone in this world who are not even devotees. So what is speak of devotees? He will certainly take care of our petty problems and uh, bring us to the higher destination. Same thing Krishna has said in Bhagavad Gita, he says that Nirashir Nirmama Bhutva Yugatas Yuddhasva Yugatajwar. Is that he says that without uh, desire and profit. Okay, desire for profit. So because uh, something may come, something may not come. So we should be desireless, yet we have to perform our duties. And Nirmama means without any ownership, trying to overlord the material nature. So, Yuddhasva Vikatajwara, he says that, give up lethargy and fight. He has told Arjuna to perform his duties without any attachments and giving up lethargy. So, sure enough, there, there was a, a great forest fire in the devotee's life. After this uh, Kaliya episode, they were too much tired, it was already late. So they thought of, you know, st staying back in that uh, land of Brindavan, wherever they were in the, in the forest of Brindavan, they slept, actually, all of the devotees. And in the middle of the night, there was a great forest fire. They have not even completed their, you know, night sleep. Already there was another great attack. So there was a forest fire blazing and then what else they could do? They said, Krishna, Krishna, Mahabahu, Tvarnatham, Gokulam, Raja. They again prayed to Krishna, my dear Krishna and Balram, please, please come and save us. We are your devotees. So sure enough, Krishna actually came forward and actually, actually swallowed the forest fire. And uh, Actually, and uh, of course, um, Prabhupada writes in that purport that who else other than the Supreme Lord can do such wonderful superhuman activities. So therefore, uh, without accepting any Tom Dick Harry as Supreme Lord, so we should understand what it means to be a Supreme Lord. That you should be able to perform something great feats like this. Uh, devouring forest fires and, you know, lifting over the hill and killing all these big, big demons. And actually he danced on Kaliya's hoots, one thousand hoots. Hmm? Hundred were very prominent. I mean, who can actually even think of dancing? You know, we have nice floor, we try to dance. And uh, as it is said in Hindi, uh, Angantera. No? So here he is not dancing on a flat surface, he is dancing on the hoods of this poisonous snake. Actually, the head of the poem in these um, 
um, snakes are very very slippery hmm? and uh, they are actually trying to bite krishna krishna is only a small baby boy and is dancing on a, such a surface as that of the heads of kaliya and not even once actually he he actually uh, lose his balance and in fact uh, sometimes uh, I actually i was hearing the lecture given by his holiness radha govind maharaj he said that uh, sometimes they give the tail of the, uh, the serpent in krishna's left hand as if he is trying to balance other was heavily balance actually that's not right because krishna he doesn't have to take anybody's help so actually he danced both his hands uh, very beautiful playing flute and doing so many other things and yet he managed to chastise the kaliya thoroughly so <clears throat> and this is not once again there is another forest fire happens it's not once second time also there is this time it happened in the day time last time it happened at night because they all slept there is a great fire is fire and krishna comes forward and he actually solves it similar kind of forest fire was breaking out one nice morning krishna balram and all the cohort boys they went out for their uh, daily uh, service to the cows taking them to the this time they took all these cows and calves to munjaranya forest it is mentioned over there at the day time and all of a sudden <clears throat> again there was a forest fire this time there were no any elders only friends and uh, cows and calves and balram only they were there and krishna requested them please close your eyes can you imagine if there something situation like this how can you close your eyes but krishna requested them can you please close your eyes they all had so much faith in krishna they actually closed their eyes and thus actually krishna swallowed the forest fire acharyas have given comments why why krishna asked them to close their eyes because if they see that krishna is eating or swallowing uh, this forest fire they will certainly go to mother yashoda and complain because already they are complaining about krishna eating all these uh, you know somebody going to somebody's home and eating uh, of course if he eats uh, butter that's not a problem but uh, sometimes they are, he's also occupied of eating dirt so what if mother sees that i am eating fire now again there is going to be havoc at home so therefore he tells them to close their eyes and they close their eyes and then krishna very nonchalantly very peacefully he actually sucked he swallowed the great forest fire so this is what it means to uh, be a supreme lord we heard couple of years ago in uh, australia there was a great forest fire hmm? so much of fire so much of land of you know actually the trees were being burned there for nobody could do anything it went on for so many months and then something somehow it got subdued so so if that if if that kind of, if this kind of uh, you know uh, forest fires are going everywhere then then those who claim themselves as supreme lord they should do something about this but they cannot because they are not supreme lords anyway so therefore we sing early in the morning samsara dava anala lida lok isn't it because if there is forest fire only a great water like you know some um, uh, rain can only actually take care of this otherwise it's not in the hands of any human being so therefore we pray to the lord first thing we utter not even hare krishna mantra nothing so first thing is sansara davanalo that we come before the lord and we pray my dear lord we are actually under this great forest fire hmm. so therefore you please rescue us uh so thus uh, we take shelter of shri guru who is actually representative of shri krishna who can actually uh, subdue this forest fire
and uh, he recently also in our ashram in uh, sharanagati we actually see this kind of a situation all of us were in the afternoon time there was a forest not forest fire but the fire electric fire maybe there was some short circuit something happened so all of a sudden myself and some devotees were there and i happened to be in my room over there and i saw a, the great i mean fire emanating immediately we called uh, you know our devotees and they came and they took care of the situation so thus uh, the these fires are going everywhere also we recently heard uh, in uh, calcutta iskon calcutta 3c albert road radha govinda dev temple propat personal dt's temple there was also some fire because of some electrical short circuit so and here also in mumbai every now and then we hear that there was some fire emanating from here and there and some so many buildings are destroyed nearby some uh nearby some in location there was a great fire and then it was night time there was elderly person his, his mother was also stuck up in fire and he actually went to save his mother none of them they could come out so both them they they died in that fire in that fire so we can see that how much fire is creating havoc and also some time ago we here in propad nilambar there was a fire in the mud and that was a different kind of fire isn't it it is not this regular fire actually bhakti dhan thakur was not very happy with this kind of fire so therefore he actually uh, instructed shila propad if you ever get books if you if you ever get money then print books because there is kind of some disagreement and some problems in the uh, proper actually bakshi dhan sir thakur said that this is actually fire it should be immediately subdued and he tried his level best to subdue the fire and uh, ultimately shri propa <coughs> took the message of his spiritual master and he actually wrote so many books and he distributed them still devotees are distributing and uh, when we read actually all these literatures which can subdue the the fire fire of lust and fire of greed and fire of anger there are so many fires uh, all over the world and thus we can save this humanity by chanting hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare shla prabhupad ki jay grant rashimad bhagavat mahapurana ki jay nitai gaur premanande hare krishna